truly honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, big mamas, standing the gap mamas, and anybody else, aunts and daddies who are taking over the place of mamas. Happy Mother's Day. I truly want to thank God for allowing me to be here today and to be able to speak into your lives. I thank God that I have my mother here with me. My mom, if you'll please stand. <laughs> my sister, who came from Chesapeake, Virginia, with her three boys, my nephews, Dr. Smith, um, Dr. Smith sorry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that your words will be given out clearly mm -hmm. 
Lord, I ask that you will hide me behind the old rugged cross. Yes. That only you might be seen. Yes. yes. Lord, I ask that you would just bless these people who are under the sound of my voice. Mm -hmm. Lord, bless them richly that they may receive a word and that it will fall on fertile ground. Yes. Lord, I ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. With today being Mother's Day, I would like to speak on the topic, all the hats in a woman's closet. Mm -hmm. All the hats in a woman's closet. As a young girl, I was always in church, and the one thing that I noticed and I loved with all the hats the women used to wear. And I see a few of them here right now. And like many of you, I've seen them wear a little ones and big ones, short ones and tall ones, skinny ones and fat ones, shiny ones and dull ones. And as you can see, they come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And although it's something that I having done myself. It is now, but now that I'm all grown up, and I'm a wife, a mother, and a teacher, I've discovered that I've had to wear all kinds of hats. Because when I'm dealing with my husband, I sometimes have to put on my diplomatic hat. <laughs> because sometimes I have to negotiate for what I want. And then there are times when I have to put on my encourager hat. Because sometimes I have to help him with what he's going through. Yes. And then when I'm dealing with my children, yes. I sometimes have to put on my trainer hat. Yes. Because it's my job to train them in the way that they should go. Yes. And then sometimes I have to put on my warning hat. Because it's my job to warn them that the objects in the mirror might be closer than they appear. Yes. And if wearing all those hats weren't enough, I then have to get myself together yes. and go to my job. Yes. And after teaching for more than 20 years, Amen. I can't tell you all the hats I had to wear. Amen. There are days when I had to put on my prophetess hat. Yes. Because there were days when I had to tell my students that if you don't change your work habits, there's no way you're going to pass in my class. <laughs> and there are days when I had to put on my counselor's hat. Because there were days when I had to help them work out their problems. And then there were days when I had to put on my referee hat. Because there were days when I had to keep them from fussing, cussing, and fighting all day long. And then there were days when I had to put on my patience hat. Because there were days when I had to deal with the parents of my D students who thought their child should have been an A student. <laughs> oh, and then there were days when I had to put on my evangelical hat. Because there were days when I had to tell my students that they better pray they don't embarrass me when my boss comes in. <laughs> but the one thing that I don't want you to do is I don't want anybody to pity me for all the hats that I have to wear. Hallelujah. Because every hat I have was given to me by my Father, which is in heaven. Yes. Yes. And when he yes. gave me my hat, yes, he, he promised me that he would never put more on me than I could bear. Yes. Yes. And he promised me that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Yes. And although it hasn't been easy wearing all those hats at the same time, no. I wouldn't trade my hats for anybody else's. Because although your hats might look good on me, your hats were designed for me. And your hats weren't made for me. And just like David refused to wear Saul's armor, I don't want to be caught wearing somebody else's hat. Because every hat God ever gave me, he gave it to me for a purpose. So I can tell you it. I don't know how many hats you have, how well you've been wearing your hats or how well they look on you. Yeah, but what I do know is, if you want to find a hat that will fit your purpose, yes. or if you want to find a hat that was tailor-made just for you, mm -hmm. 
Yes. You don't need to go to the mall, search the internet, or borrow one. Yes. Because whatever kind of hat you're looking for, my God got it. Yes. Not only does my God have it, but he will give it to you. Yes. And the good news is that he will give you the kind of hat that you can't find any place else. Yes. He will give you the kind of hat that supplies your every need. Yes. And he will give you the kind of hat that was made just for you. Yes. And I can tell you from experience that his hats are filled with his virtue. Yes. And the price of his hats are far above rubies, yes. far above silver and gold, yes. and far above all the other hats in your closet. Can I get an amen? amen. Yes. Church, there is no accident that I chose this text for today. Because all of my life, this has been one of those scriptures that has helped me out. Yes, Lord. It helped me to keep my mind stayed on Jesus. Yes. Because believe it or not, there were times in my life when I felt like giving in, giving out, or just plain giving up. Amen. Because despite what it looks like, life for me ain't always been a crystal state. Yes. But just like Langston Hughes said, it had hats in it. Yes. Splinters and boards torn up. Yes. Places with no carpet, mm -hmm. just bare. And that's why I thank God that he gave me a virtuous mother. Yes. He gave me a mother that knew how to pray. Yes. And he gave yes. me a mother that trained me up in the way that I should go. Yes. And he gave me a mother that knew what it meant to be a child of God. Yes. And because she knew what it meant to be a child of God, I learned what it meant to be a child of God myself. Yes. And I made up in my mind at a very young age that if I was ever blessed to have children, and if I didn't do anything else, I was going to teach my children. And I was going to tell my children what the Lord had done for me and where the Lord had brought me from. Let me tell you something, church. I spent a whole lot of time down on my knees praying for my husband because I wanted my husband to live right and to walk right. But I made up in my mind as a young wife and a young mother that I wasn't going to let my husband walk affect my way. Oh the most important hat that God ever put on my head yes. is a hat that says mother. Mm -hmm. And because it's a blessing to be a mother, yes. because only a mother can tell you what it feels like to have somebody growing inside of you. Yes. And only a mother can tell you what a baby's kick feels like in your stomach. And only a mother can tell you how much pushing it takes to bring forth life into the world. Because although daddy might have helped get them here, daddy didn't have to deal with the pain and the swell, the sleepless nights or the morning sickness. And that's why they say mama's baby and papa's baby. Because Papa may or he may not feel happy. And Papa may or he may not put the bills. And Papa may or he may not do what he's supposed to do. But a real woman and a real mother is going to be there for her child. And not only will she work until the job is done, but she'll do whatever needs to be done. And if that means wearing one or two hats, then that's all right. If that means working two or three jobs, then that's all right. If that means giving all she's got and giving what she doesn't have, then that's all right too. Because being a good mother simply means that you wear whatever hat you have to wear. And you wear it for as long as you have to wear it. Because at the end of the day, God will make sure that your labors are not in vain. Amen. Now it seems like that I've mentioned all the hats that one woman could possibly wear. Make it plain. But our text shows us. Make it plain. There are three yes. most important hats yes. all mothers need to wear. Right. Yes. And the first hat is a provider hat. All right. Yes. Because in this text, we see a woman that was really handling her business. Yes. Because she knew how to provide for the needs of her household, her husband, and her heirs. Right. And not only did she provide for their needs, 
But the text says that with her, they had everything that they needed. She was the kind of woman that knew how to bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. She was the kind of woman that knew how to take care of her children and take care of her man. Because she was a real woman. She wasn't the type of woman that slept nor slumbered. But instead, she was the type of woman that rose up early in the morning and went to bed late at night. And when I think about the kind of wife and mother that I want to be, Yes. The kind of mother that knows that she's been blessed and highly favored. Yes. The kind of mother whose children rise up and call her blessed. Yes. Yes. And you don't become that kind of mother by chance or by accident. Yes. But if you want to be a provider, then you've got to know the provider of all providers. Yes. And you've got to put your family's needs Amen. above your needs. Yes. Which means you might have to skip your next hair appointment. Yes. And you might have to miss your next manicure. And you might have to pass up your next pedicure. Hallelujah. Because in order to be a provider, you got to do more than just look the part. That's right. But you got to live the part. Yes. Because when God looks at you, he's not just looking at your hips, your lips, yes. or your fingertips. Yes. But God is looking at what's on the inside. Yes. Because God knows yes. that being a provider is about what's on the inside and that providing about is what is in your heart. And if your heart is right, then God can make you into a virtuous woman. Yes. And God can give you the hat of yes. a provider. Yes. And that's the kind of hat that you can wear with your Sunday's best or your Monday's mess. Amen. And that's the kind of hat that brings glory and honor to your Father which art in heaven. How many providers do I have in the house this morning? that all mothers need to wear is a producer hat. Mm -hmm. When I think about this woman and everything going on in her life, mm -hmm. there are times when I'm amazed at the fact that she just didn't <laughs> simply lose her mind. Mm -hmm. And something tells me that she never uttered the words from Karen White by saying, I'm not your superwoman. Mm -hmm. But she probably uttered the words of Aretha Franklin by saying that she just needed a little more R-E-S-P-E-C-T. -E because this woman not only had to be a wife and a mother, but the text says that this woman also had to be an importer because she was the one who brought in the goods. And she was a purchaser because she was the one that bought the fields. And she was also a seamstress because she was the one that made their clothes. Amen. A community activist, because she was the one that worked with the poor. Amen. And she was even an evangelist, because she was the one that spoke the law in her house. Amen. And when I think about this woman doing all these things at one time, it makes me think about a producer on a movie set. Amen. Because a producer can't just be good at one thing. But a good producer has to be good at a whole lot of things. Right. It has to be good at those things all at the <coughs> same time and all without losing his mind. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that distinguishes between a good producer and a great producer. The thing that distinguishes between a good mother and a great mother. And I'm not sure how they did it, but those mothers of old, they had a way of taking just a little bit and making yes. a lot. They had a way of producing something yes. from nothing. Yes. And that kind of reminds me of the widow in 1 Kings chapter 17. Because the Bible says when Elijah came to her, Elijah asked her for something to eat. And all I have is, she said, was a handful of flour yes. and a little bit of oil. Yes. But don't you know that when she took that little bit that she had and she offered it up to God, yes. that God was able to work it together yes. for her good. Yes. And she was able to produce a cake from the scraps. And this little one in church reminded me of my own mother. Because when I was a child, my mother had a way of working miracles. Yes. Because my mother had a way of making something out of nothing. Yes. Because when I was growing up, 
we didn't have much and we didn't have the finer things yes. in life. Yes. But what we did have was a mother that knew the Lord and a mother that knew a little something about arithmetic. <laughs> My mother knew how to add a little bit of this and a little bit of that in order to make us a meal. Yes. And my mother knew how to subtract one child over here and carry one child over there in order to get us where we needed. Amen. And my mother also knew how to divide. She divided her time so none of us ever felt lonely. But most of all, my mother knew a little something about multiplication. Because she knew that if she took the little that she had and she gave it over to God, that he would multiply it into a lot. And God would keep her cabinets full and he would supply her every need. So all I'm trying to tell you ladies is you gotta recognize what you have. Amen. And you gotta recognize who is on your side. Because God said if he be for you, who can be against you? And God said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So mothers, put on your producer hats. And the last hat that all mothers need to wear is the protector hat. All right. Amen. Because when I think about this woman and all that she was doing, I just have to ask myself, why was she working from sun up to sun down? And why was she working in the house and in the fields? And why was she working her finger to the bone? Amen. And every time I ask myself why, I'm immediately drawn to John chapter 10, where it says that the thief never enters through the door, Amen. but he always finds another way in. Amen. And when I think about this mother and what she was doing, it makes me think, what she really was doing was protecting her own. Because this woman realized what so many of us forget, and that is that the thief is searching the earth to and fro, and the thief is always looking for a way in. So mothers, if you don't hear anything else this morning, make sure you hear this and make sure that you hear me well, because it's a mother's job to protect her own. It's good when you've got a man around. And it's good when a man wants to do his part. And it's good when you don't have to do it all by yourself. But you gotta have the spirit of a lion. And you gotta have the kind of attitude that says, in order for you to get to my kids, we you wanna have to get to me first. Because if you ever take your eyes off the prize, or if you take your eyes off the family, or if you take your eyes off of Jesus, the enemy will find a way in. Yes. And all I can tell you is yes. from experience that if you ever let the enemy in your house, mm -hmm. there's no telling how much damage he's going to do or how long he's going to stay there. Yes. Because the enemy wants to kill, steal, yes. and rob. Yes. In order to do that, he'll attack your family, your finances, your friends, and your faith. Yes. Because the one thing he wants you to do is to stop trying. Because he knows that if he can ever get you to stop crying, yes. he'll be able to devour you like a lion. Mm -hmm. But you got to know that the devil is a lion. Yes. You are not a quip. You are a conqueror. Mm -hmm. So all I can tell you, mothers, is keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Keep on providing for your families. Mm -hmm. Keep on producing the good works. Mm -hmm. And keep on protecting your own. Because although it might not be easy, and nobody ever said that it was going to be easy, mm. Jesus did say, if you fight the good fight, yes. if you finish your course, yes. and if you keep the faith, mm -hmm. he does have a prize for you. Yes. Yes. Which means that you'll be able to trade in all your hats yes. for a different hat, and finally put on a crown. Mm -hmm. And Jesus does know a little something about crowns. Yes. Because when he went to Calvary, yes. they crowned him king of the Jews. Right. And after being in the grave for three whole days, he got up early on that Sunday morning. Yes. And he was crowned king of kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Yes. So as I take my seat, I want to thank God for all of my hats. Yes. And I want to thank God for all that he has allowed me to do. Yes. 
But most of all, I want to thank him for wearing the hat of a mother. Stand to your feet and give God some praise and thank God for all the hats.